I no longer carry any feelings of betrayal around my brother, my mother's son. And when he rejected me, I didn't look at that as a betrayal even at the time. I think I was so focused on the abandonment, the rejection, and the heartbreak of it that that never came into play for me. My mother is a sociopath and a narcissist for anyone out there who doesn't know my story and my background or for all the people because there's a lot of you out there who don't know. So if you happen to be scrolling, that's my background. And I've been a no contact survivor for over 30 years. When I went no contact, my brother didn't stand with me. And there was a point where I went no contact with my grandparents and he called me and berated me and told me how they saved our lives and all this, that, and the other. And even then I didn't feel betrayed. I just felt judged and abandoned and rejected. And I wasn't, I was surprised I wasn't surprised. My brother had four stepfathers, I had three because his father was the first marriage. My brother is five and a half years older. My brother got five and a half years of one-on-one -on -one with my mother to become her dependent, to become her savior, to become her pseudo-husband, to become all of the things that she made him into. And once I recognized that we didn't have the same mother, we didn't have the same living circumstances, I recognized that just as much as I was groomed to believe my mother without question and to follow her order and rule because I needed to stay safe as much as I could have, I needed to survive her and I was desperately trying to earn her love, so was he. And the way he received her love was through care and loyalty. That's, that's how they bonded. He became something different to her which also falls into her, him becoming her golden child at some point in time. And throughout all of that, I'm running away from home. The family narrative from the time I'm four years old is I'm a family liar and my brother's five and a half years older and he's drinking the Kool-Aid. He's also a child. Here's where it falls apart but doesn't trigger me. Now he's an adult. And I think if there were anything that I wasn't going to forgive him for, because all of the rest of it, I don't even look at a forgiveness attached to it. I don't believe in giving forgiveness for the unforgivable and for people who aren't earning forgiveness. I, I don't believe in that. That's my personal journey of my relationship with forgiveness. I accept what can't be changed. I accept that I have to heal from things that I should have never had to heal from. I forgive myself for things that I did that I'm not proud of to others and myself during my healing process, but I don't, forgiveness is just not a big part of my life. I don't see the point of forgiving someone who's absent from my life and who hasn't done anything to earn it. Anyway, where it all falls apart for me was when I was in my 20s and I went to him on the phone, I called him and I told him about the essay that I had suffered when I was 12 years old when I ran away from home and how somebody kept me through the night and everything that had happened to a degree, not in great detail. And my brother repeatedly said, you've always been a liar, you're a liar, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying. And, and I, I remember saying something to the effect of, why would I lie about this? And he just held the standard line. I don't blame him for that in that moment because I think that that was the reaction that he was brainwashed into. You know, people go into a cult as adults and it's hard to deprogram them. You're talking about something that we're born into and it's our mother doing the programming. That runs really deep and I can understand that, which is why now I'm no longer triggered by it. In that moment, I was devastated. What I can't or won't or choose not to get past because I'm not giving him a free pass for that is he became an adult. He was an adult then, but the years have passed and it would have cost him nothing to send me a note and say, you know what? I'm really sorry and I believe you. And I am my mother's son. I don't want a relationship with you if that's the case, but I wanted you to know that because I actually give some sort of a damn. I don't think I'll ever really get past that and I'm, I'm definitely feeling the feels as I talk about it because I still have a feeling of some weird affection 
for my mother's son. And that's the reality of the losses that never really go away. The other reality is it's not something that lives rent free in my brain and I can talk about this now and then go on with the rest of my day and my life and put that back where it belongs in a place where I don't need to look back on it anymore because I already have understanding over the fact that my brother was raised to be my mother's son and I was a motherless daughter.